everybody. Welcome to the Hamakua Homestead. My name is Tiffany and on this channel I'm taking you along for the adventures here on the ranch. Yesterday was a pretty long day. We had had a steer hanging in the refrigerator for three weeks and then yesterday we brought it home, took off all the outer parts from the dry aging and got it all packaged up. A lot of it went to the grinder for ground beef and now it's all put away, packaged and put in the freezer. But I did grab a couple of bones so that we can make beef bone broth. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. The first step, aside from finishing cleaning up the mess from yesterday, is to go ahead and roast our bones. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that process right now. And I just figured I'd bring you guys along and show you the process. These bones were in the freezer overnight. They are very cold, but not all the way frozen. Got a few different parts here. Some of these parts like this is um, from the, the shank. This looks like it's part of a shoulder blade. So our bones fit quite nicely in our two roasting pans. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick these in the oven as is. You can drizzle a little bit of like olive oil on there or something if you want to. We may end up doing that in the process if they get too dried out. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and roast these as is for an hour or two and I'll bring you back and show you what they look like for the next step. Okay, so our bones have been in the oven just plain bones for about half an hour or so. So we're gonna go ahead and take them out right now, drizzle some oil on. I think I'm gonna go ahead and salt them as well. <clears throat> we're gonna flip them, put them in for another 30 minutes. back into the oven and get cutting up our vegetables. We are just going very basic today with our beef broth. I'm going to do celery. You'll notice I'm not cutting these very small at all. That's because it doesn't matter. They're gonna get roasted and then they're gonna get boiled and then strained out eventually. I'm not bothering to even peel the onions because that adds more nutrition, adds more flavor and it's okay. Let's get these put in with the bones. Evenly disperse our goodies. That was three large onions, one whole bundle of celery, and one bag of carrots. A regular size, kind of small one from the store. We're just going to keep going for another 30 minutes and see what happens. Something I forgot to put in just now, garlic. I just put our 
big huge pot of water on we're going to want this to come up to temperature so that when we add all of our ingredients to it it's already nice and hot okay so our bones have been roasting for a total of a little bit more than an hour um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get them put into our hot water so it can start becoming our broth All we need to do is take our beautiful bones and put them in here. Take all of our veggies as well. Everything's going in there. Even the brown bits on the bottom that has so much flavor packed into there. It's awesome. So with adding all of our bones and vegetables, this is what it's looking like right now. It looks pretty amazing if you ask me. I'm very excited. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more water in here and just let it simmer. That's good for now. I'm just going to leave this and let it go, give it a stir once in a while, and just let all of those flavors come together inside of this one pot. Okay, so our broth has been simmering at somewhere between a simmer and a low boil for four hours now. And now we're going to go ahead and strain out all of our chunks so we're just stuck with the liquid. Start with just taking out all the big chunks and letting all the good liquid drain off of them. You could have boiled this longer. You could go, you know, six, eight hours, and that would be just fine. But this is what we're doing today. You see how all that good marrow and juices are coming out? That's what we're looking for. So we're just gonna go ahead and let this drain out for a few minutes while we get our canner ready. With all of our leftovers, I guarantee you our chickens will be very happy today. I just took out our gigantic canner, but looking at this, it's not, it's not that much. I don't think we're gonna need our big boy. Uh, so before I start getting this hot, I'm going to go ahead and fill up our jars so that I know which canner I need to use. Now, in order to fill up our jars, I'm going to be straining our broth just with an average strainer. And I'm going for one inch head space when I'm filling these up. The reason that I am straining it, you see, I don't know if you can see, all these little bits and pieces, I don't want those in my broth, so that's why we're doing that. But, I just realized, we haven't tasted it yet. It's 
very fatty. It's pretty good. I'll probably add a teaspoon of salt to each jar. We ended up with just shy of 10 quart jars. And I just don't think that it's worth firing up the big boy here for that. So what I've decided to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and can seven of them and put the two, almost three, in the refrigerator for use in the near future. Now that our jars are filled up, our water is getting hot. I probably should have put it on a little sooner, but I hadn't made up my mind yet. So now we're gonna go ahead and take some white distilled vinegar and clean off all of our rims before we put our lids on. I'm not going to use brand new good lids for the ones I'm putting in the fridge because they just don't require it. Okay, we have our canner full. I'm going to do our safety check on our lid. Make sure that the edge has a little bit of greasiness to it. Make sure that you can see daylight through our hole here. on there nice. Okay, so that's all we need to do for right now. We're gonna go ahead and wait for this to come up to temperature all of the way and steam will start to come out of the vent pipe um, and then we will start our next step in the process. We have a steady stream of steam, tongue twister, coming out of our vent pipe. So I set our timer for 10 minutes and I'll bring it back and show you the next step. All right, so our timer just went off. We have been processing for 30 full minutes. I didn't bring you guys along and show you that I was putting on my 15, uh, 15 weight gauge. That's what I'm at for my elevation. And that was after the 10 minutes of venting. It has now been going for a full 30 minutes with this rocking and rolling and doing its thing. So now we're just gonna go ahead and hands off, wait for it to come down from pressure naturally. We're not gonna mess with it, we're not gonna do anything. And I'll bring you back when it's time to bring our jars out of the canner and I'll show you how it turned out. Okay, you guys, it has been a long day, but our jars are ready to come out of the canner. Let's see how we did. All right, we have some serious beef broth going on. Okay, so it was definitely a long day with all of our roasting and our boiling and all of our everything. But we did end up with seven beautiful jars of our beef broth, two in the refrigerator that I will use up tomorrow for dinner in some way or another. And then the majority one, the one that was like almost full, I actually ended up using for dinner tonight. So that was awesome. I had a recipe that required um, two and a half cups of beef broth. So we just used that one and it was amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today on Mahamakua Homestead. I will see you again soon. Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. My name is Tiffany. A big mess to clean up. Awesome, beautiful, rich beef broth. Careful. <clears throat> we have a steady 